Before you publish another low content book that's barely going to sell, stop what you're doing and watch this video until the end. I'm going to show you a more effective approach to self-publishing that is guaranteed to make you more money. Low content books used to be all the rage and three to four years ago you could do really well with them, but things have changed. And the first thing I wanna do is define what low content means to me and what it means to Amazon because that has changed recently. Okay, so we're on Amazon KDP's low content books page. The reason I want to stop here is unless you're brand new to publishing, your definition of low content books might be a bit different because up until about a year ago, Amazon and myself probably would have considered low content to be something like a children's book or on the shorter end, maybe a games book, but they've changed that now. So a low content book has minimal or no content on the interior pages. Low content books are generally repetitive, designed to be filled in by the user. So yeah, things like notebooks, planners, diaries, prompt, logbooks, essentially all that's changing on these books is the cover. And the other thing is you do not get an ISBN for them through KDP. So they can't be eligible for expanded distribution, which, you know, if you've ever hit publish, you'll see that extra box where you can click on it. Essentially that book is going to Ingram Spark and uh, they're doing expanded. So your book can show up all over the place. So it's kind of like getting extra money for doing nothing. Well, you're not gonna be able to do that with your low content book. Unfortunately, a bunch of people came in that were after easy money and they started publishing thousands of books. So picture a KDP account with five or 10,000 books and all these published over a very short period of time. Essentially, they were just clogging up Amazon with garbage. And I remember during that time, there was even things like bots that would do this for you. Somehow it would like sync up with Amazon and help you publish all these so they, they wouldn't even have to do it manually. You get covers that were almost identical and low quality and they just changed the title slightly thinking like, okay, if I put out 10,000 of these, five or 10 of them are gonna make me money. And quite often, that was probably the case and it wasn't a lot of money. So this isn't an effective approach, but it ruins the experience for the customer. It clogs up Amazon's marketplace and essentially Amazon got tired of it. The people that are creating these kind of books aren't people that are looking to help people or to get into publishing. They're just people chasing what they think is easy money. and they're trying to do this by spending as little as possible and putting in the least amount of effort. And that's when these low content or no content books really became something to avoid. Even today, you'll still see people giving advice on YouTube saying to get into these no content, low content books and that you can make them in a day or you know use Fiverr and it's really cheap, but it's really a bad idea. And a lot of the people that have recommended this stuff are either watched by Amazon extra closely, these same people end up getting their accounts terminated because there's not a lot of leeway. Like if Amazon sees you do something remotely wrong that they don't agree with now, and you're publishing low or no content books, you're probably gonna get terminated or suspended. So it's just not worth it. So what should you do instead? If you've been working on these kind of no content, low content books, and you're making 50 bucks a month and you got 500 of them, or you're just getting started and someone advised you to get into them, just scrap that idea and think, okay, how can I make one amazing book that is what we would call a medium or a high content book? I know other people will advise you and they'll say, hey, do medium content, which you know, they would call something like coloring books or puzzle books, things without repetitive pages, because this adds a little bit more of a moat, but I'm gonna tell you to get into high content. So a high content book is something with writing. So it could be a kid's book, that's you know 50 or 60 pages, or it could be like a traditional novel that's maybe over 150 pages. But this is creating a large moat around your product. It allows you to be unique, it allows you to be protected. Versus having no moat and the no drawbridge and walking right in, the better you design the book and the better it's written and the larger the product is, and if it has illustrations or a unique cover, or it's on a topic that you, know, you need some expertise on, in order to publish. This is all creating a larger moat around your book. So that thing's getting wider, it's getting deeper, there's a bunch of crocodiles in there, and I'd like to think like a couple sharks. And it's a big old drawbridge and it is up. You got archers on the roof. So 
the average person is either A, not gonna wanna put in the effort or B, not have a little bit of money to invest to create something to compete with you. So you've instantly lost 99% of the competition. And the other benefits of these books are that they don't have razor thin margins. They're gonna sell for you know, 11, 12, 14, 99. And when you sell one, there's gonna be more profit in it. So since there's more profit in it, you make more money and then you can invest in ads. And these ads will allow you to scale things up and sell more of the book and you can reinvest it and so on and so forth. So even though maybe you had to save up a little bit of money at your job in order to do one of these books versus doing like 500 free low or no content books, it's gonna pay off so much more in the future. Quite often I'll put out a book and maybe it'll be in paperback format or a Kindle. And I'm thinking that, all right, I'm gonna do really well in sales for these keywords or this topic. And you know, a few months will go by, I'll launch it and it's making like 300 bucks a month in like paperback sales, a little bit on Kindle. And I think, ah, oh, this is, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. By most people's standards, it would be great. But to me, it's a little bit of a flop. And I'm thinking, darn, like I, I put some time into this. But then I go turn this into an audiobook. I check Audible or ACX a few months later, redeem a few codes, get it ranked. And that book's like doing another five or 600 bucks. You know, I can put it on expanded distribution. Like we said earlier, we couldn't do that with the lower no content stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I get an order for a hundred books on Ingram Spark. And I just pocketed four or 500 there, audiobooks making me money. So you never really know where it's gonna come from. There's so many other options when you create this longer form content. And I suggest you basically turn the book into as many different formats as possible and basically just see which one ends up paying the best for you. But like I said, low or no content, no expanded distribution, there's no audiobooks. You're really limited with them. So even though you got to put up a little more at first and it maybe take you a bit longer to get a book out, go the high content route. I don't have any problems if you want to do like what they call medium content now and do coloring books or whatnot. There's still money to be made there. It's just, I don't suggest that, but I will in the future do some more content around like people that have been successful and what you need to do to succeed in that. But no and low content, stay away from it. If you have any questions or anything, drop me a comment below and I'll get right back to you and help you any way I can.